Hey everybody, this is Franco, and this video is going to be about raw material selection. If you are an experienced machinist, you know how much of an impact the proper raw material choice can make on the outcome of your machining projects. If you're new to machining, you may not understand this, and you may uh, start a project, choose a grade of material that's difficult to machine, and then you'll struggle. You won't be able to get a, a good surface finish. You'll break tools. Uh, it'll just be a, a miserable time. And it may not be because of uh, anything else other than the fact that you've chosen a piece of raw material that's just really difficult to machine. So I'm going to try to share with you what I know. And I'll keep this really simple because I'm not a metallurgist. So I'm going to keep this really basic. And hopefully there'll be lots of really good comments on this video and we can all learn from each other. So to get us started, I found some really nice videos here online that show the chip forming process. And you can see what's going on here. This is a, a cutting tool flowing through a piece of material. And you can see, let's see if I can pause this, the chip, the chip doesn't form right here at the tip of the cutting tool. The chip actually forms ahead of the cutting tool. You can, you know, you can see what's going on here. So, it, you know, it's interesting to consider this when you're, you're thinking about raw material selections. So, materials that are more difficult to machine, they form like long stringy chips that don't want to break require higher cutting forces in some cases. More easily machinable materials, they, uh, they form a chip very easily. The chip breaks more easily. It's easier to control, requires uh, maybe less cutting forces, and uh, you know will just generally give you uh, a better result when machining. So I'm just going to let this video play because it's kind of cool. Here's uh, Here's another good example. And I don't know what material this is. I don't know any of that. But I just, I like these videos because they, they let you see something that you normally would not really be able to visualize. It's, it's really cool. And, uh, you know, here again, you can see that the chip is actually forming ahead of the insert. So there's, there's different grades of materials that are considered uh, highly machinable. And many of these, these grades of material will have things in them like lead or sulfur, um, and maybe some other materials, but lead and sulfur are the two that come to mind, uh, right away. So what they do, uh, the lead and the sulfur act as lubricants. So you can imagine like, you know, it's, it's, it's like having oil in here while you're cutting, right? You know, that's going to make things slide a little bit more easier. But another thing that happens, the the lead and the sulfur actually form uh, occlusions in the raw material. And what happens is, you know, during this chip forming process, these, uh, these occlusions form, you know, here ahead of the insert while the cut's being taken. Those occlusions actually make the material chip. They make the chips break. And that's what you want. You know, when you're machining, you want those little short you know, sixes and nines that, that break ahead of the cutter. Uh, long, stringy chips, you know, they're harder to work with. They're no fun. And they're, they're more typical of difficult uh, to machine materials. Okay, so that's the end of those videos. Uh, so, let's just recap where we're at right now. Uh, we want to use highly machinable materials because they chip better, they give better finishes, they're easier to work with. And, uh, you know, on your DIY machines, you know, usually if you're in your garage or your basement, you're not usually working on this big honking heavy duty machine that's ultra rigid. You're usually working on a smaller, lighter machine that uh, has less rigidity. And that's where those highly machinable materials really pay off. You'll, you'll get better results. You know, if you're in a big, in a commercial machine shop with big heavy duty equipment, you know, Material selection still matters, but it's not going to be uh, a, a showstopper like it would be in your garage. 
So let's just start with steel here, for instance. So there's all these all kinds of different charts online that will uh, compare the machinability of materials, and uh, I'll, I'll probably I'll throw links to these different websites in the description of this video. But here's a chart, and it, it's talking about steels. So 1018 steel. That's uh, if you if you went to Home Depot and you bought a, a chunk of bar stock and you brought it home and you tried to machine it and had a terrible time, it, it was probably cold rolled uh, 1018. And you can see that has a machinability rating of 78% on this chart. Now, I can tell you uh, 12L14 is a highly machinable grade of steel. And you can see it has a machinable rating, a machinability rating of 170%. So 1018, 78%, 12L14, 170%. And I can tell you from personal experience, machining 1018 is not so much fun. It's really gummy. doesn't machine very well. You grab yourself a piece of 12L14, and, uh, you know, it cuts like butter. It's awesome. And let's see, I have some other information here. Okay, 12L14, 12L14, cold drawn bar, and is standard resulfurized and rephosphorized grade of carbon steel, a free machining steel. And the added lead to the chemical composition provides improved machinability. Okay, so machine's very good, uh, isn't quite as strong as, you know, other grades of steel, but you know what, chances are that really doesn't matter for what you're doing. So there you go. If you're machining steel, go find yourself some 12L14. And uh, you can get it from McMaster Car. You can buy it on eBay. 12L14 is not too hard to come by. You know, McMaster Car calls it ultra, ma ultra machinable material. And they have plenty of it in all different sizes and shapes. So there's the first point. If you're machining steel, go get yourself... 12L14, and you'll really see a big difference, especially if you've been trying to machine uh, 1018, which is garbage, really hard to machine. All right, um, let's move along here, and let's talk about aluminum. Aluminum is another really popular material for the DIY uh, hobbyist or home machinist. And here again, if you went out, to Home Depot and you bought yourself a chunk of aluminum, you probably got, you know, grade 6061, which is a super popular grade of aluminum used all over the place. Uh, a lot of different things are made out of 6061. But 6061 is not a really wonderful free machining grade of aluminum. If you want a nice uh, free machining grade of aluminum, go find yourself some 2011 or 2014. I think 2011 is more readily available, and uh, I think you can buy that pretty easily on eBay for McMaster Car. And you'll see, it's a, uh, let's see, what does it say? High mechanical strength, excellent machining capabilities, uh, often called free machining alloy. Excellent choice for projects done on automatic lathes. And it says, the high-speed machining of this grade will produce fine chips that are easily removed. And Alloy 2011 is an excellent choice for production of complex and detailed parts. So the first time I, I spent most of my life machining 6061, which, you know, is not, uh, is really not a difficult material to machine, especially if you're on a, you know, a production machine with, you know, coolant and, you know, rigid, heavy duty, able to take, take good cuts, you know, 6061 is fine. But on a little DIY machine, 6061 stinks. And the first time I cut 2011, I was like shocked at how easy it was to machine. It just, it, it chips beautifully. It gives really nice finishes. So long story short, if you're going to machine aluminum, go find yourself some 2011. And here again, I think... Yeah, here we go. McMaster Car, uh, they, they have 2011, formable, easy to machine, has an excellent machinability rating, 
It's available all in all sorts of different sizes, different precisions. It's not terribly expensive, and um, you can, you know, find it all over the place. All right, uh, next, let's talk about brass. So if you're going to machine brass, uh, you want to go get yourself some uh, 360 alloy or brass, you know, 36,000. Uh, brass 360 and this is I guess you may you may find this is the uh, the gold standard for a lot of those machinability charts they may consider you know brass 360 the 100% uh, machinable but at any rate if you're going to machine if you're going to machine brass go find yourself some uh, 360 brass and here we go. McMaster Car has it. They call it, you know, ultra machinable 360 brass. Same thing. Um, you want to get the material that is the easiest to cut. It's going to give you the best results. And let's see, what else do they say about it here? Uh, I guess there's not too much else to say about it. Just, you know, brass, ultra machinable 360. That's your brass grade that you want to go after. All right, uh, what else uh, do we want to talk about here? Oh, stainless steel. Okay, so I don't machine much stainless steel in my uh, garage, but uh, we machine a lot of it where I work. And uh, like 316 uh, stainless steel, for instance, is it can be a very difficult uh, grade of stainless steel to machine, especially if you don't have a, a good setup or a good rigid machine. In your garage, DIY, if you need to make something out of stainless steel, then uh, 416 is the grade you want to look at. And let's see if I can zoom in on this chart a little bit. This is uh, comparative machinability of frequently used stainless steels and their free machining counterparts. And you can see grade 416 has the highest machinability rating. Now, I won't lie to you, I have not personally cut 416, but um, I'm going to go by the literature that I found here on this, and I'm going to say that this is uh, the one you want to go with if you need a the more easily machined stainless steel. Uh, and perhaps maybe there's somebody out there that can comment on machining 416 compared to other stainless steels. And I would really appreciate that if you could you know, throw that uh, comment on this video and help everybody out. Okay, so um, so we talked about all the different, you know, uh, free machining grades of, you know, common materials. There's one other thing that I'll say, and I don't really have a, a good picture to, to show you this, but I'm just going to, you know, kind of speak to the, the topic. Uh, even with the freely... Uh, free machining grades of material, what you will notice is, so let's say you get yourself a piece of uh, 2011 uh, aluminum. It, it's almost as if the bar stock has a skin on the outside of it. And uh, so let's say you grab yourself a quarter inch piece of, you know, 2011 aluminum and you take a very light cut, like you're just going to take, you know, five or ten thou off the outside of the bar stock you may not get the best surface finish or the best machining results taking that light cut. Uh, it, it's, it's, and I'm not a metallurgist, so I'm, I'm just going to explain this to you in layman's terms. It's like the mechanical properties of the surface of that bar stock are not the same as the rest of the stock, you know, closer to the center. So even in the free machining grades, um, you still need to take that, cut that skin away, get down underneath that skin and get into the more, uh, you know, easily machinable material that's underneath it. Okay, I want to keep this under 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop right there. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And like I said, if you uh, have anything else to add to this conversation, please, you know, comment on this video and share your knowledge. Okay, thanks for watching. Be safe.